Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'll be doing Fire Alarm Review with one of the most iconic devices of all time, the Simplex 2903 light plate. So as you can see on the top, this has the infamous, iconic, simplex, uh, triangular light. Some of these do have strobes. Um, the older models like this one do have lights. They also make dual bulb versions. So this particular device only has one bulb and it's just in the middle right there. However, they do make models that have two bulbs on the sides opposed to one. Those are significantly more rare. And this one is also a surface mount model. So it's pretty similar. It's literally identical to the other model, except the horn mounts on the front of the device instead of the back. So the reason for this is not what many people think. They just think that they made it like that just for fun. Um, they think it looks better or blah, blah. It's not like that. The reason they did that is because um, it's designed for things like speakers that you can't mount behind the device or bells or chimes. So, for example, this horn, right, if it was a flush mount version, it would look perfectly fine behind the device. So let's pretend for a minute that if we remove this horn and this is basically the back of the device, um, pretend this is a flush mount version, I could easily just put this horn back here, it would be okay. I mean, that looks pretty stupid because this is not designed to look like that, but this would be fine. However, if I take a large bell and I try to slap this behind the device, well, that's not gonna work. So this would have to be mounted on the front of the unit like this. However, something you might also wonder is how the bell is going to work because um, I'm not a bell expert, but I do know that most uh, bells do have warnings on the back that say that you should mount the bell upright like this because the striker that hits the gong, it needs to work with gravity instead of against it. Um, so this has to be mounted like that, but that would cover the light. So on the back, you might notice that there is, as you can see, this is the light. It's an incandescent light. Originally, these usually do have polarization diodes, but mine is not have that for whatever reason so see you can actually remove this lens so you just take your finger and very very carefully you just push on this and then that comes out and then you can push that like that and there you go so this is the lens of the alarm you can see it says fire fire inside it actually has this weird looking very cool design I think it's to help disperse the light better. And then in here you see we have a reflector and then the bulb. This reflector, you can see it actually has these two little knockouts right here. That's for the dual bulb version. So there would be two bulbs on either side and that's um, where the two bulbs would go. And then the middle part would be filled in. Um, so actually you can make this go upside down. So instead of having it like this, which is usually what I like, you can also have it like this which is how you would have bells. So since that's upside down, you can now have the bell working with gravity. And there you go, that looks pretty cool. Contrary to popular belief, the fact that this thing has four by four holes on either side does not mean it's designed to mount on a four by four box. It is possible, it does work, I do it, but it's not designed to work like that. You'll see that there are actually screw holes on the top and bottom right here and here. This is designed to be mounted on a simplex back box. So the reason you can't just easily mount it on a 4x4 is because say you were mounting this inside of a wall, uh, flush mounting this, um, you would just have a 4x4 in the wall. I'll demonstrate that. So right here I have a 4x4. Pretend that this is uh, behind the wall. And if you were to mount this, well, then we have an issue because this part uh, all of these things that are exposed, that will make contact with the wall and you won't be able to get it flush and possibly damage the device. Also, if you're mounting it on a 4x4, well, look at this. You're pinching the wire, and if you screw it hard enough, you will pos you'll probably damage the insulation and short it. So that's why you don't mount these on 4x4s. If you're going to mount it on a 4x4 because you don't have a simplex back box, that's okay, I do it, but you just have to be very careful not to pinch the wires. Something I found is that you can actually just use these two little holes on the top right here and feed the wire through there. And if you can't do that, you can always punch out a knockout a little bit and just feed the wire through there. However, what you definitely don't want to do is uh, ever pinch the wires. All right, so I have the device wired up now. Let's go ahead and test it. Three, two, one. 
There you go. This device is quite cool. I really like the actual light portion of it because, I mean, strobe lights are cool and they do make these with strobes. However, the light is always the preferred one for me because it just looks, I mean, it's, it just gives you the 80s feel because of how, you know, it, it looks retro when you have a uh, light behind it. So I'm gonna do that again. I really can't do a good march time or whatever because of how um, my power strip is set up, but I will try.